Up now, Forum Daily's weekly market update with Catherine Murray, host of The Buck Stops Here. Thanks, Julie. Hello, everyone, and welcome to your weekly market recap. I'm Catherine Murray. Well, we are seeing upward momentum in North American equity markets today, with the Dow and the S&P up by about 1%. Uh, the S&P, in fact, is on track for four straight days of gains. Uh, and we're also seeing the higher beta areas of the market. So think the Nasdaq and Russell 2000 up by about 1.5% and 2% respectively. WTI, in, interestingly and importantly, is recovering from yesterday's losses up by about 6% today. And that is also helping the TSX, which is trading up by about 1.7% today following a 0.6% pullback yesterday. We're also seeing a broad bounce in the commodities complex with copper up by about 3.5%. Semis are rallying on the back of strong preliminary results out of Samsung, really calming fears about downside earnings risks as we head into Q2 earnings season, which really kicks off in earnest next week. And with rates continuing to move higher today, banks are also seeing some positive gains. Now, although we are seeing some gains today, there's really no change in the market narrative, which is the push and pull between the bull and the bear case. Uh, the bear case, of course, investors concerned that the U.S. Federal Reserve will be unable to orchestrate a soft landing, cause a recession as they raise rates to combat inflation. We did receive the FOMC minutes yesterday, which were hawkish, meaning that the U.S. Federal Reserve continues to be aggressive in their quantitative tightening mode. The bullish takeaway, though, is that it seems to be working. Financial conditions are tightening and economic data is still good, but we are seeing lower highs. So a slowdown in economic demand appears to be happening. Perhaps this will lead the U.S. Federal Reserve to cool on the tightening mode, giving some floor to market valuations. Now, the market moving higher today is also on the back of policy support out of China. Recall, U.S. and Canada and other European nations are in a tightening mode in terms of raising rates and pulling back quantitative easing, while China is actually offering monetary support to keep its economy growing. Specifically, China is considering allowing local governments to sell $220 billion of special bonds in the back half in order to accelerate infrastructure development and spending. Um, China also announced a number of incentives to boost auto demand. Speaking of China, of course, uh, investors are also watching very closely the doubling of COVID cases in Shanghai and the impact that has on economic de demand in China, but also, of course, the impact that has on global growth. At the same time, Beijing introduced its first ever vaccine mandate. So perhaps that will help in terms of some of the cases and, of course, the economic impact. As we look at economic readings, the two to watch this week will be U.S. and Canadian jobs. The U.S. is looking for a gain of 250,000 jobs. This is going to be out tomorrow morning at 830. And Canada is looking for 25,000 job gains and 5.1% unemployment rate. Always important to take a look at the merger and acquisition activity. It does sometimes signal uh, CEOs' view that the world is fine and they want to continue to invest. We did hear news that uh, pharma giant Merck is looking to buy a biotech company, Cgen, uh, S-G-E-N is the ticker. It's a $40 billion deal potentially. So again, a lot of money being put to work potentially. Uh, and looking forward, the bull case uh, in terms of the markets, inflation may have peaked. Uh, we have oversold conditioning or positioning. Uh, negative news is known. Uh, the bear case though, and why we might be in a little bit of a holding pattern here and why we're really maybe just seeing some relief rallies is earnings. What will the earnings picture look like next week? What will we see in terms of the actual results? Will it be better than feared? Will stocks rally on the back of that? And what will company management say? That's gonna be key in terms of what they're seeing from a demand perspective and the input costs. Just real quick here in terms of the Canadian business news, RBC is projecting that Canada will be in a recession in 2023, but that the downside will be mild. We're also in housing, seeing that Montreal is the latest to show signs of cooling with home sales and prices down in June. And also the CMHC said that Canadian mortgage debt has hit its highest level since 2008. Do keep in mind that we're also going to be watching very closely the BOC, the Bank of Canada next week. It is widely expected that they will hike by 75 basis points and the benchmark would therefore stand at 2.25%. A lot to watch jobs tomorrow and the BOC Bank of Canada next week. Julie, that does it for me, back to you.